You guys know why you clicked on this video. There's, there's no need for an introduction. You're trying to put a table on your WordPress website, and there is no other way to, to basically do this other than hand code it, copy and paste from some table generator, but then you have all your issues with responsiveness. Well, everything, it's, it's finally over. You can go ahead and rest, rest easy because we have the perfect solution right here. Hey everyone, my name is Donald from Brainstorm Force and I make WordPress video tutorials of all of our products. If you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel and click the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. So here's just a sample of one of the tables that we can create with this amazing, and I'm talking amazing element. We have uh, ways to go ahead and add icons uh, and do this. So we have all of our text, we have the striped effect, but you guys already know about all this. The part that you care about the most is the responsiveness, right? So even doing something as complicated as this, being able to span your columns and rows over multiple columns and rows, it's just, this is perfect. So we're just gonna go ahead and get right into this. Inside of your Elementor page builder, you're gonna look for table. Click and drag this element right into here. And we already have a great looking table right here. And you're probably wondering about responsiveness. Well, if we switch to tablet view, it looks great. And if we switch to mobile view, hit still, looks great. Everything is perfect. There's no overflow. There's no left and right. Everything is just, it just works. So we're gonna show you how to go ahead and add your content so that it looks great. And then we can go ahead and dive into doing some of the more advanced features. So I'm just gonna collapse this for now. We have three different sections right here. We have table header, table content, and advanced settings. The table header is this top row that you see right here. The table content is everything below it that you see in these nine uh, cells. Let's go ahead and work on the table header. So, what we need to do is we have a row. So we always need to have this row right here. This is gonna tell us that we need to start a new row. From there, it's going to give us a couple of actions. We can start a new row, or we can add a new cell. Underneath of that, we have our cells. So this is basically just saying, hey, go ahead and start a new row but this isn't where we enter any of our details. Right here, inside of the cells, each one of these is a cell. So inside of those, we go ahead and add all of our content right there. So we have cell, we have the sample ID. We can go ahead and, and configure this, and we'll get into this in just a minute. We have heading one and heading two. If we need to switch those around, we have the abilities to do that. So it's heading two, heading one now. As easy as, as switching those around. We can always add more cells if we need to add a, an item. We have the ability to add a cell here. And then we can, of course, start a new row if we wanna do that. And when we do that, we can add items, and then we have more cells that we can add here. So as you can see, we have in our heading, we're still working in our heading, we can have two rows of our heading if we need to. So let's go ahead and get back to the default. Let's go ahead and explain a few things here. So start a new row or add a cell. So basically, if we click add a cell, it's going to turn it into a cell. And if we do add, start a new row, it's gonna have it as a row. Remember, we always need to have this row at the very beginning of our rows or else it's not going to format correctly. Inside of here, we have our cells, and you may be wondering, well, there's a lot of different options. How does it work? So under here, basically, they're all the same elements. Instead of selecting start a new row, you have add a new cell. So this is going to be a cell right here, and you're going to get tired of hearing the word cell by the end of this video, I promise you. So underneath of here, we have content, icon, image, and advanced. So our text, this is where we're going to put our text right here, and it says sample ID. This is some text. So we have the ability to just customize the text in there how we wish. We can add an icon or an image. So if we go to icon, we can choose an icon, select which one we want. 
and we have that there. If we go to advanced, this is where we get a little bit more creative and we will dive into this at the very end of this video. So stick around if you want to see some of this. For the color, we can go ahead and choose, choose this. So right now the color is default. We can set this to be a different color. And then we also have the ability to do background colors as well. So we can go ahead and add that. So make this look a little bit nicer. And we have those options. We have all of those same options inside of the other cells as well. So let's go ahead and get rid of the other two and just duplicate what we have here. There we go. We already created a header for our table and it already looks great. So we're done with the header. We went ahead and we, and we, we went ahead and we just did a simple header right here. Let's go to the table content. As we mentioned before, we have rows. We, technically, we have three rows right here and three columns. You can see we have a row here, a row here, and a row here. These are going to tell the element when to separate all of these cells into a new row. So, for example, if we didn't have this row, it would have six cells inside of this one row, and the formatting would just be off. So if you're having issues with formatting, be sure to make sure you have the correct number of cells inside of each row. And it's always good to match it up with the header. So we have that ability as well. So from here, you're just going to add a row. And then you're going to go ahead and add your cells. So we can go ahead and change the content, just like we did up here. We have the icon image, and then we have our advanced settings as well. If for some reason you're like wanted to make this into a heading, we can actually convert this cell into a table heading, and it will go ahead and give us some styling as well. So we can go ahead and turn that on or off. It won't actually move it into the table heading, but it just gives it that table heading property. And I'll show you uh, a couple of reasons to do that later on. So from here. We really have our table set up already, so we're going to go ahead and create um, some advanced things. We have sortable table, so if we turn on the sortable table, we can actually sort the table um, by clicking on the table headings, which these are the table headings right here. So you can sort those as you wish, and you can see that I'm sorting them. If you see the numbers changing, you can actually click on the headings and, and do that as well. We can have a searchable table. So if we want to search for a specific row, so we can do sample number one, and we can search for that and it'll appear right there. We also have the show entries drop down, so we can control the number of entries inside of a table. So we can show all the entries, one or two. So if we just show two, we can show one. We have those ability to do that as well. And then we have our responsive. We can turn responsive on or off. So if we turn it off, we get this squished up table that we normally would have with the table. And if we turn responsive on, it will go ahead and put these inside of its own thing. So we have our headings here, and then we have each row stacked on top of each other right there. Inside of the style, we have a few different options. So for table header, we can go ahead and change the topography as, as we normally could, so we can make them all uppercase. We can change the text alignment, so we can go ahead and align those a specific way. And then we have row colors and background colors. So they're all white right now, so we can change the background color to be something different. We can go ahead and do that. And the reason it's not actually changing is because under content, we have this row, and we have the text. Under advanced, we already went ahead and changed this background color. So if I remove that, then we have this over here. So let's go ahead and fix that so we can see our thing here. So we have the row background color. We can go ahead and make those changes here, as you can see. And then we also have apply border too. So we can apply the border to the cell or to the row. So the border will be here, and then if we apply it to the cell, it'll put the side borders in there as well. 
the border width and solid, we can go ahead and change the type and the width of the borders if we need to. So we can go ahead and do that. And then of course we can change our color of our border to whatever we wish. Let me look just a little bit better. Doing something along those lines. For the hover, we have the same options for default and hover. So we can go ahead and change those different options. So when we hover over top of this, the row color will change to something different. And the text color will change to something different. And then we have all of those different capabilities as well. For the table body, all of this is the body right here. So we can go ahead and change the size of the fonts, the topography, all of those different options. We have the text alignment, so left, center, and right align. And then all of those options we have in here. So row colors, the striped effect, which is the every other uh, row will have a different color. So we can go ahead and choose that one or off. If we have the striped effect on, we can do striped odd rows color, a specific color. Or we can have them uh, be for the even colors. So we can have a uh, color applied to those as well. So as you can see there, we have the way to apply the border. So we can do the border to the cell or to the row. And if we go ahead and do that, we have the ability to go ahead and change that down here. And then we have the colors. For the icons and images, we have the ability to change the colors for the icons and images. We can go ahead and change those here. Increase the scale of those and also change the position so it's before or after. And of course, icon spacing to give us some spacing from the header. If we choose image, we have all of those different options as well here. For the search and show entries, we have the label color. So the labels right here, we can go ahead and change those. Input color. So right here, we have the options to change that as well. And then we have input background. So right now it's that light gray. We can go ahead and change that to be whatever we wish. And of course, border type, if we wanted a border on it or if we did not. And then we have our padding as well. We have the ability to adjust the bottom spacing right here, as well as the size of the input. We can go ahead and change the width of that. So every part of this is customizable so that you can go ahead and make it look however you want for whatever application you're going to go ahead and, and add it to. So let's go ahead and do dive a little bit more into this video. Let's go ahead and get rid of this and we're just going to add a new one here. So from here, we have this table right here and we have all of our uh, search right here. We have the table heading and then we have all of our version numbers here. We also have this row and span columns span table. So let's go ahead and recreate something similar to this. So we have our heading, we have two brands, and then we also have colors and sizes. So let's go ahead and create something similar to that. So right here we have our row. We have the typical three uh, headings right here. So let's go ahead and change a few things here. So we have those right there. Underneath the table content, we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this. Just because it's a lot easier to start from scratch. So we have our row. We wanna go ahead and add a cell. And this is going to be the, the first brand name. So we have Armani. Let's go ahead and add this. And just for the sake of speed, we're just gonna do an icon. And we're just going to add an icon to this. Underneath that advanced. So we have column span and row span. Columns are going up and down. So each of these is a column. And rows are going side to side. So as you can see in this one, we have up and down three. Three rows. So we want this to span on the rows three. Okay, and you won't see that right now. But once we start adding some more, you'll see that. So we've gone ahead and we've added that. We have our icon image and we have our content. Let's go ahead and add another cell. So here we have our colors. So we can add 
red. So we can go ahead and add another one. And this is going to be sizes. So from here, we have a size. So let's do a large. So we have that. Let's go ahead and add another one. This one's going to be start a new row. And we're going to go ahead and add another color. And this one's going to be blue. So as you can see right here, this is our one row for the one cell. And then we started a new row here because this is spanning two rows. So the new row is going to start right over here. Let's go ahead and add another size, large. And then, so we have those two are here. And we spanned it three, so let's add one more row. Add another item. This color is going to be purple. And then we're going to go ahead and add large. So we have those ability right there. So we can go ahead and have this set here. So now we can actually style this if we want to. We can go under style underneath of the table body and let's center align everything so that it just looks more uniform. From here we're going to take off the striped effect because we don't need that. And then we can go ahead and keep it the way it is now. We can change the color of all of this. So we can go ahead and take the table content, go to the cell Armani, and then we have all of these different options for icon image and advanced, so we can go ahead and have those. So for right here, you can see all of what it takes to do something that looks just like this. And then everything is completely responsive so that we can go ahead and make it look great on all devices. Let me just change this to brand name. So we have all of those options as well. This is a great way to do advanced headings and things of that nature. And then of course, if we want to turn on our advanced settings and do a sortable table, we can do that. Also searchable as well. So we have all of those different options. If they want to search for Armani's or red or blue or things of that nature, they have all of those options right there. I really hope you guys found this video useful. Making tables inside of WordPress has always been a, just even making them inside of a website has always been a hassle. But using this element, it's going to help you guys make great looking tables and it's going to be completely responsive across all of your devices. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos, and we will see you guys next time.